What is an ME? That's a question that comes up fairly often in video related discussions and I want to talk about what it is and why you might actually want to have more than one of them. So hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a video production company in Orem, Utah and been doing video for over 20 years, 25 years plus actually. And yeah, what the video switcher that I use for my company is the 2ME Production Studio 4K from Blackmagic Design, part of their ATEM line, and the reason I selected that one is because, one of the reasons I, bought, I selected that one is because it has two MEs. Well, what the heck is an ME? It's a mix effects engine. Some other companies refer to it as MLE, but it's all basically the same thing. So, I'll explain what this is. So before I get into that, let me explain a little bit about what you're seeing on screen. So what you're watching right now is basically a four-up view of four different video sources. So upper left corner where you're seeing me right now is the output program output of my switcher. And then in the bottom half of the screen on the left, you're seeing output the multi-view 1 output of my switcher. And on the right, you're seeing the multi-view 2 output. Now on the upper right, it's a little bit different. That's actually another program output on my switcher, which I will get into a little bit in a, mi in a minute, but uh, that is program 2. So my switcher actually has two separate program outputs. And that's part of this whole concept of what an ME is. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means that the switcher is able to produce multiple programs simultaneously. Why would you want to do that? Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons, and I'll get to those in a, in, a, in a little bit. But before I do that, I actually kind of wanted to spend just a minute uh, showing how this works in the interface. So, so yeah, an ME basically is considered like a separate output. You know, almost almost like having multiple switcher, switchers that have the same video sources going into them. So camera one coming in on ME one is the same as camera one on ME two and ME three and so forth. So you're sharing common sources, but you're able to do different things and produce different programs, different outputs with those. So let me just do a very quick demonstration here. So. On a traditional switcher that uses preview and program, you're able to select the preview source. And then once you find the source that you want to take live, you can hit the cut button in order to switch back and forth between those. And you can certainly do that on an ME switch, a multiple ME switcher. But the, what you gain by going to multiple ME switcher is the ability to do that for multiple different outputs. So if I come up here to the second ME, and if you watch kind of the middle right of your, your screen, as I select different preview sources on the second ME, these are a completely separate mix effects engine output and it can be treated almost as if it is a separate switcher. So as I select different preview sources, I'm able to prepare for output to a different program bus. Once I find the source that I like, come over here and click on the cut button and it cuts back and forth just like it did on the first ME. So it really is like having a separate switcher within a single piece of equipment. Okay, so how can we actually take advantage of having multiple MEs on a switcher, and why would you even want such a thing? Well, let me cite a couple of examples. Because you're able to produce two separate outputs at the same time, you can do some very cool things with that. So the main way that I actually use this the most is in situations where I'm having to do IMAG, which is image magnification, which is basically just a fancy way of saying we're producing a video uh, feed for a projector inside of a venue. A uh, large screen that people can watch just to get a better idea and better be able to see what's going on and as part of an event. Well, very often we don't want the same thing up on the projector screen that we're sending out to a live stream for a lot of different reasons. But say, for example, a wide angle shot is not very useful in a live setting with IMAG. You know, people are already there, they're in person, they're already seeing the wide shot with their own eyes. We don't need to show that on a projector. So we very often won't cut to a wide angle on the projector feed. Another reason, we might want to include a PowerPoint or keynote presentation and have that up on screen a lot more on, have that up on a projector screen a lot more than we want to include that in a live feed. So for that reason, when I'm producing an event where we're doing IMAG, I will very often use the second ME on the switcher as the feed for the projector. It'll be a little bit different than what people are seeing on the live stream, but it's a good way to make sure that people who are watching in various locations are getting the most effective view of what's going on. Similarly, we had an event we did a few months ago called ForkFest. It was a concert, a festival, music festival, and there were two stages that were going on 
simultaneously. And we needed to produce live streams for both of those. Instead of setting up two separate switchers, I actually just used my, my one switcher, my 2ME single switcher, and produced two separate programs with that. So ME1 was the main stage, and then ME2 was the auxiliary stage that was kind of off on its own. The technical director for stage one was using cameras one through four, the technical director for stage two was using cameras five through eight, and they were able to produce the two programs completely separately from one another, although it was going through the same switcher. The only thing I had to do there that was a little bit unique was I had to replace the audio output for ME2 with the audio from the second stage because switchers, at least, at least the switchers I've used, don't do separate audio mixes for the additional mix effects engine outputs. So, minor little inconvenience. Uh, but it gives me the ability to use a single piece of equipment and a single set of graphical assets coming from the same media pool for both stages. It worked out really, really well. Now, there's another cool thing that you can do with mix effects engines, and I'm going to switch to my overhead shot over here in the upper right, and you'll notice that on my control panel I have a button here that's labeled ME2. There's actually two of them, one for preview, one for program. This button actually allows me to take the output of ME2 the program output of ME2, and use that as a video source on ME1. Well, why in the world would you want to do that? So, well, first of all, I'll demonstrate it. For, so I'll select ME2 as a video source on uh, ME1, and then I'll do it a dissolve. And so you'll see that it dissolves between sh the camera shot of me and, in this case, the overhead shot. But the overhead shot is actually being selected on ME2. So if I was to select me as the preview on ME2, and then do a dissolve there, you'll see that it dissolves on both because ME1 is actually showing the output of ME2. So it follows as long as I have that second ME as the source for ME1. So I'll cut back to my main camera. There we go. And now they're fully independent of one another. So I can cut back and forth freely on ME2. And it doesn't affect ME1 because I'm not no longer using ME2 as the source on ME1. One way you could use this, and it might be a little confusing at first, but you adapt to it pretty quickly, is to do your main feed on ME2, and then feed that into ME1 through the ME2 button, and then only cut away to a different source on ME1 when you need to do something different on that. So just one, one quick example of that. You'd have your live stream feed on ME2, and that would be what you'd use to do the majority of your cuts and dissolves and everything. And then on ME1, just cut to something else whenever you want to do a different shot on your iMag, on your projector. So most of the time, your projector feed follows what you're doing for your live stream, but then occasionally you do an override on ME1. So that's not not most traditional use for a second ME, but it's one way you could possibly use it. And I have done that a few times, and it does make the job of switching between two different uh, switching two different programs at the same time a little bit easier, and you're able to reuse the cuts that you do on ME2 on ME1. Now, because the output of ME2 is actually a selectable video source, there's a lot of things that we can do with that. We can, for example, use that as the source for an upstream keyer and place that in a window, or in the case of switchers that have a super source feature, we can use that as the source for a super source window. Now, I'm going to show you a, a quick example of that. If I go over to my media tab in ATEM software, notice that I have a lower third loaded into still one, and that is currently active on media player one. I come back over here into the switcher page, and then go into upstream key one, and I'm going to select ME2, Luma key, source is media player one, and then if I press on air, it's going to put that lower third on M the output of ME2. Now, I can certainly just, just use that and dissolve that real quick, but there's other more powerful ways of util utilizing this. Say, for example, now I go over into MixFX Engine 1. Let me take this off, off the air so you can see what I'm doing a little better here. So ME1, fill source is going to be, sorry, I'll put that on DVE, and put it on DVE, and I'm going to set the fill source on that to be Program 2, which is the output of MixFX Engine 2. And then I'm going to leave the position as is for right now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take 
the lower third on air on ME2 and you'll see that there and then what I'm going to do is come down here and I'm going to take upstream key 1 on ME1 and put that on air as well so now there it is in a window let me tweak that a little bit so bring the let's bring the size of the border down so it's something a little more sane all right there we go and then I'm going to just go ahead and move that over a bit now let's shrink it down too so let's make that smaller there we go all right so now you're seeing the output of me2 in a window on program one that's something you can't do you can't include a lower third in a, a window like this on switchers that don't have multiple me's on them there's no way to apply uh, a lower third to just a, a window uh, without doing this without using this technique and using, utilizing multiple mix effects engines on a switcher Having the output of the second ME in a window on the first ME actually allows you to do some very cool things, like being able to change the shot within that picture-in-picture -picture window without having to recompose uh, and readjust all the settings for your upstream keyers. Now, I'll just do a quick example of that. So I'm going I'm to select camera 1 for the preview on ME2, and then I'm going to do a cut, and there you go. Now you're seeing me with a lower third in that window up top and I didn't have to adjust any of the settings with the upstream key. And I can certainly keep cutting between different shots there as well. So as desired I can just keep doing, keep cutting and the shot uh, within that picture-in-picture -picture window changes without having to make any adjustments in the upstream key as well. So there we go and then we'll do dissolve. And there we go. So, yeah, you can use, use the output of ME2 in a window. That's a very cool way to take advantage of that functionality. So, in this way, we're able to actually use the second mix effects engine on the switcher to produce an entire separate layer that we can do pretty much anything we want to after that. So, very cool, very awesome feature uh, to be able to do that kind of preparation. Now, I've heard of a lot of people that actually will use a second ME as a way of preparing a complicated shot, adding multiple layers on top of one another, getting it all ready to go, and then once the time comes to actually take it live, you just select ME2 as your video source on ME1, and then do your cut, dissolve, wipe, whatever, uh, in order to uh, in order to bring that uh, live. The advantage to that is that you're, you've got some additional protections from making mistakes, so all the changes that you're making are on a second ME, separate from your main ME, and so if you do make a mistake and put something on, put add in a layer or select a video source that you didn't mean to, that it's not live. You actually have that extra step in there that's required to actually take what you're doing and make that go live. So interesting way of using the 2ME feature on these switchers. So anyway, those are just a handful of ways that you can use uh, an additional mix effects engine on your switcher. There's a lot of other things that can possibly be done and you can possibly do. This is really only a handful of the possibilities that are out there. It's really cool having that additional functionality. Uh, I'm sure if you were to think about this a little while, you'd come up with situations where it might make more sense. I've also heard people talk about using a second ME as a way of doing a video feed for, uh, for on-air talent so they can see a different source than what's going on uh, on the main program or additional rooms within a building. I mean, the, end, the number of possibilities is kind of endless, and the things that I've shown you here today are really only the tip of the iceberg of different ways that you can use a multiple mix effects engine switcher. So there are switchers that actually will have more than two, ME, two MEs that this switcher has. Uh, within the Blackmagic line, their 4ME Broadcast Studio uh, switcher has four MEs, as the name would suggest, and their Constellation also does as well. So. You need, if you have a situation where you need to produce multiple layers of video or need to have very complicated shots that you're assembling for multiple layers, having those mix effects engines as part of your kit, part of your arsenal of tools, can really improve the quality of your productions and make thing, and actually make things a little bit easier. And so instead, if you need to do something very complicated where you're putting something in a window where it has multiple layers on it, the only way to really do that is with multiple MEs or multiple switchers. And having a switcher with multiple MEs is just a lot easier than cabling up multiple switchers 
uh, it's not necessarily a great way to go unless that's the only choice that you have. So anyway, oh, I know there's some people out there that are going to be saying, hey, I can use the auxiliary output of my switcher to produce multiple programs. What's the advantage of having an ME versus that? Well, aux outputs on switchers very often can be used for that very purpose. You know, for example, before I got my 2ME switcher, I was using the aux output on my previous switcher that I did one ME production studio before. I was using the aux output on that in order to select the video sources for I, for iMag for a projector, and that certainly does work. But it's very limiting in what you're actually capable capable of doing. So you don't have the ability to do anything other than a cut in terms of transitions. So no dissolves. Uh, you also don't have the option of upstream keys as well. So you can't do lower thirds on that feed, or any other. other you can't do green screen or anything else that's that's. Uh, it's done with an upstream keyer in a switcher, so you're really only able to switch between different shots uh, using an aux. So having an aux is nice, but having an ME is better. It gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more options available at your to at your fingertips in order to produce the uh, more complicated video program than you would be able to do otherwise. So, okay, so that's going to do it for now. So. ME's are very very useful. Having multiple ME's is something that's very powerful, very cool and uh, yeah, it's a great tool to have. Um, if you have questions about this or anything else related to video production, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Or even better, join us over on the Discord server that I've got set up. So you can find that at djp.li slash Discord. And we've got a community of many hundred people who watch this, this, watch this channel, and they're more than happy to answer questions as well. So be able to get feedback from not just me, but other members of the video production community, be able to hear multiple pr perspectives on things, not just mine. And it's, it's pretty active. There's people, there's discussions going on there all the time. And we'd love to have more of the video production community join us there as well. So that's going to do it for now. So thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.